Okay, so now that we've got the scripts, these four scripts here, we need to create the nav mesh where this guy is going to be walking around using to navigate around the world. So to do that, let's go into navigation. If you don't have that window, I'll just get rid of that. Pretend I don't have it. Go into window and then go into navigation. And here, what you want to do is click on mesh renderers, but you notice how nothing pops up. This is a limitation with nav mesh. Now, what is a mesh renderer? I'll show you what a mesh renderer is. Get rid of that first. Okay, so I will create a cube. And let's put it somewhere obvious. Um, so there's our cube, right? Um, and this here is the mesh renderer. And the mesh renderer is responsible for rendering the object. So you've turned that off, you can't see it anymore. All that's left is the collider. I'll just move that up a little bit. I think 0.5 would do it, right? Yeah. So that's what it does. And I believe it works in collaboration with the mesh filter. If I were to get rid of that... Yeah, it's got nothing to render anymore. So it takes the mesh filter cube and then it um, stops working. Why? See, I'm learning while I'm doing a video. That's not very wise. Oh dear. Oh, ah, it's just really small. What? <laughs> okay. Maybe that's the wrong one. Ah, oh, that's, that's better. Okay, right. Okay, so that was some different cube. Or maybe it wasn't a mesh at all. Okay, anyway, just wasting your time. So now, what we do is we go into navigation and we go into mesh renderers and now we have something. Before we had nothing, you remember this list was empty and we have that. So now we can do navigation static and bake it. And now the now the nav mesh, all the blue area that you see is where we can navigate and the white area is where we can't navigate. But we don't care about this cube. I just took that in for demonstration purposes. So let's clear that. Um, what we want is to have the chest. Now, you may ask, why is it that the chest doesn't have a mesh renderer? Well, it does have a mesh renderer, but it's a different type. What we have with the chest is something called a skinned mesh renderer. It's not there. It's there. A skinned mesh renderer. And a skinned mesh renderer is a mesh renderer, which also which has a mesh which animates and changes. So because this chest can open and close and do these sorts of things, it doesn't have a mesh renderer, it has a skinned mesh renderer. And for some reason, uh, nav mesh doesn't recognize these. Um, I looked on the forums and there was like one guy who asked this question and no response. I was quite surprised considering that nav mesh is the built-in pathfinding system for Unity. And this is the f like one of the first times I've used it and suddenly I couldn't even have navigation around the chest. I thought there'd be more solutions to this problem, but I couldn't find any. So I had to make my own hack. If you know of an actual solution to this, leave it in the comments below and I'll make an add-on video where I show you how to fix that based on what you we advise. But for now, what we're going to do is this. In chest, we're going to right click and we're going to add a cube. Now the cube, as we saw before, has a mesh renderer. So this is something that the nav mesh is going to recognize. Let's call this nav cube. Now we're going to make the cube the same size. So on the X, we'll scale it 2. And then we'll raise it 0.5. So now it's the same. But we don't want it to look like that, right? Because that looks crap. Um, but if we turn off the mesh renderer, the nav mesh won't see it. So I'll show you what I mean. We'll go into this. And we'll go into mesh renderer so you can see it now. But if I just turn off the mesh renderer and I go into that again, it can still see it. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. And previously when I tested this, it couldn't see it anymore. So I had to create this sort of whole complicated thing. Hmm. Well, it can see it, but it might not be able to actually bake it. No, okay, no. So it can't bake it. So what we have to do, as you can see, everything is just blue. Um, whoops, there is, uh, I'll undo that. It doesn't actually create what we want it to create, which is um, an unwalkable area. So we can't just turn off the mesh renderer. What we need to do is make an invisible material. So we'll go into models, we'll go into props, 
into materials. Let's create a new material. And we'll call it invisible. Because we'll be using this material again if we stick with nav mesh for every single bloody interactable object. Because we'll have to do the same hack with everything that's animatable, whether it's like a sign that moves in the wind or whatever it is. If it's interactable and we want to navigate around it, we're going to have to use this hack until we find a better solution. Okay. So. Let's. So what I did is I clicked on invisible. I clicked on the albedo here and I moved this right down to black. Then I changed the color to black as well. I don't think that really matters that bit. I changed this to albedo alpha and I changed that to cutout. And nothing happened because I haven't added it yet. So let's click on nav cube and add this invisible material. And now it's gone. But the mesh renderer is still there, but we can't see it. OK, so it's, it's a hack, but it, it works. Because now when we go into navigation and we go into mesh renderers, uh, we should work. Yay! So now it's going to navigate around that to get to the chest. OK, for this chest part to work, there's still a few more things we have to do. So click on the nav cube, go into the inspector, and add the int chest. Now the second thing we need to do is right click on chest, create an empty, F2, call it interaction point. Pretty sure the name matters here, so make sure you get it exactly as I've written it. Now, interaction point, make it go one space up in Z. Now you may wonder why I'm doing this. It's um, in my game. The, the place where you land has to be exact because I animate the chest and the character together. So when the character opens the chest lid, his hand follows the lid as it um, lifts up. If he lands even slightly away from where I need him to be, the animation is going to be off. So what I had to do is make a point which is going to be the same point every single time that he arrives at the chest. There are other ways of doing this, so if you don't have a kind of precise animation requirement like that, I think you can manipulate variables in the script which we're going to add to the player right now, which is the nav agent, the nav mesh agent. You can sort of mess around with stopping distance and stuff. Um, I just prefer doing it this way, but you can do it that way if you like. I think. I'm not sure how that would work with the little system I've made. Okay, so the, to the player, sorry I'm jumping around a bit, so to the player we're adding the nav mesh agent and we're also adding the world interaction script and that's all we have to do there oh we want to change the angular speed to 240 otherwise the turning is slow and kind of weird and that's it ah we need to make an uh, animator controller I'll do that in the next video okay so now the chest what we need to keep doing here we've done the interaction point <coughs> sorry we've added the int chest we need to change the tag to interactable if you don't have that tag, go into add tag, go into that plus, and then type interactable and save it. I've already done it, so I won't do it again. But it's crucial that the nav cube is called interactable. They have that script attached. Now, the last thing you have to do for the chest is drag this interaction point, empty game object that we made, into that variable there. Now, what the script will do, which we'll look at later, how the script actually works, is when you click on something with a tag of interactable, it will go and find this object and it will make that the move target. It will make that the position you want to go to. So that's what that's all about. Okay, nothing's going to work yet because we don't have an animator controller. So in the next video, I'll show you how to set that up.